one would go out the same death way came. keep ringing in my soul joy bell keep ringing in my soul joy bell joy bell joy bell keep ringing in my soul the joy of the lord is my Strength. Amen. 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 Yes. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lord of the Harvest Christian Fellowship. Good morning to our brothers and our sisters in Christ, to our family and our friends, and to our distinguished guests this morning. Good morning. Good morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just stopped by today to let you know. <laughs> Come on. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof <laughs> and be glad. Yes. Yes, Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, yes. and all, all that, that is, is within, within me. me. Bless, Bless his holy, his holy yes. name. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all, all of his benefits. benefits. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're yes. going to rejoice. And oh, yes. We're going to rejoice. Yes, we are. Yeah. We're going to rejoice. Yes. And be glad in it. Yes. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all oh, you land. Serve Woo. the Lord with gladness. Yeah. Come into his presence with singing. Yeah. Know ye that the Lord, he is oh, God. Yes, yes. It is he who has made us and not oh, we ourselves. Yes. We are his people and the sheep uh, of his pasture. Yes. So in and into his gates with thanksgiving. Yes. And yes. into his courts with praise. Yes. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Yes. For yes. the Lord is good. Yes. The Lord is good. Yes. I said the yes. Lord is yes. good. Yes. His mercy is everlasting. Woo. Woo. And his yes. truth oh. endures. Yes. Oh. His truth endures to all. Generations. <laughs> yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Ha. Hallelujah. Na 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 Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God, our Father. Our Father, our Father in heaven. We come boldly before your throne of grace today. Yes, Lord. Our Father in heaven, we come in the spirit of thanksgiving. We come yes. in the spirit of gratitude. We come with a spirit of appreciation. Yes. Father, we come in the power of your son's resurrection. Yes. Father, we come this morning yes. because we are yes. your children. We've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Father, we come this morning to walk on water. Yes. Father, this morning, Woo! we come yes, this morning, Lord yes, God, yes. that the sick will be healed. Woo! Father, we come yeah. this morning that the blind will see, yes. the deaf will hear, yes. the dumb will talk. Yes. Father, we come this morning looking unto Jesus, mm. who's yes, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Father, yes. We call upon you today. We ask by the power of the Holy Ghost yes, Lord. that you will move through this service yes, Lord. and that you will revive, you will restore, yes. you will build up, <laughs> you will deliver, you're you will it, set the captives free. Yes, yes. Father, we calling on your name. Your name, Father. We call it on Elohim in the name of Jesus. Father, we call it on you, Lord God, to heal the sick today. Yes, Lord. Lord yes, God. Lord. Father, we call it, on you do today yes, Lord. that you, you set the captives free. Yes, Lord. You in the name of your son, yes. Jesus. 
Father, bless every person that is here today, God. Meet their needs today. In the name of your son, Jesus. God, have your way. Yes, Lord. Let your will be done. Yes. Let your kingdom come. Yes. In the name of your son, Jesus. Bless this congregation. Bless your children. Yes. Bless the believers in Christ. Yes, Lord. Bless the saints of God. Yes, Lord. Bless the born again. Oh, Bless you, Lord. Yes. Bless us today, God. Yes, Lord. Bless us today, it, Lord. God. Bless us today, Do it. God. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Yes. Have your way, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus. Move us out of the way. Yes. So you can have free reign, free course. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor for his due unto you and you alone. Yes. Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we yes. pray. Yes. In Jesus' Amen. mighty name we pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 And thank Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper right now. And what we're going to do, uh, if you don't have the elements, they're over at the back, uh, the table right there over by the sound booth. Does everybody have elements for communion? All right. We had enough out today. Good. All right. Trying to connect the Lord's Supper with the worship songs is, is easy this morning because when we talk about grace, when we talk about the blood of Jesus, when we talk about the love of God, when we talk about the Lord coming after us, when we talk about the Lord being there for us, those are all different pictures that we see in the Lord's Supper. So for our reading today for the Lord's Supper, let's go to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 26. And we will begin with Verse 26, the reading is powerful, it's rich, the reading is about the institution of the Lord's Supper which embodies the new covenant that Jesus has come at this point to make with his people which he has made with us today. Matthew 26, 26 says, and as they were eating, see, they were eating, they, they, they believed they were celebrating a, um, a, a Passover meal. Verse 17 says, now on the first day of the feast of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying to him, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? They thought it was a Passover, like every other Passover, that their people had celebrated at this point for over a thousand years. This is how God does new things in our midst. He does them in the middle of our thinking Things are just going along the way they normally go along. And then Jesus comes and disrupts yes. our normalcy. Yes, we, we need to understand that what took place at the initial Lord's Supper is a pattern for the image of the meaning of the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is that the Lord is always in our midst, in the middle of our doing things the way we normally do in church, but Jesus comes and disrupts normal and re 
enforces, reestablish, reiterates, reactualizes, renews us. And so the Lord's Supper, the reason we practice it regularly at Lord of the Harvest, we don't reserve it for a once a month or once every three months or once every six months or once a year. That's okay if that's how you do it. But we do it because of the perpetual symbol and spiritual reality behind that symbol that says our God is a God of renewal. As they were eating, as they were doing their normal 1,000 plus year celebration of the Passover, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples. He takes, he blesses, he breaks, and he distributes. When the Lord moves in renewal in our midst, and, and every Sunday, it's a renewal service. It's taking what God has done in Christ, which we know took place now for us even longer than the Jews were celebrating Passover at this time. For us now, this has been nearly 2,000 years, but Jesus is constantly renewing. He's making us new in him. He makes us new in him that we don't get uh, stuck in a path, stuck in a pattern, stuck in a way of doing things, stuck in a ritual. Again, not that there's anything wrong with rituals, but that we don't get stuck there. Because as believers in Christ, we tend to get stuck with the very Christian practices that aren't there for us to get stuck. They're there to renew us freshly in his presence every time we gather. The pattern Jesus takes, he takes what's there. The bread was there. He takes what's there. He takes our foundation in the gospel. He takes our tradition. He takes the written word that record things that took place thousands years earlier. He takes it, he blesses it. When Jesus blesses it, the words that come and proceed from his mouth are the same as the words that came from the creator. In Genesis 1, when God said, light be, and light came into existence. The world was created by the not only the sound waves in God's voice, his sound waves brought the universe into existence, but the breath behind the sound, the life of God, the spirit of God brings life. So Jesus takes what is there, he blesses it, and in, bless, in blessing it, he breathes on it. He breathes life into it. He breaks it. God breaks what he does because he doesn't want just, oh, wow, there are a couple people who are really in the spirit at the service that Sunday, and, oh, they get it. No, he breaks it so everyone gets it. He breaks it into bits and pieces that relate to Joyce sitting where Joyce is, that relate to Mary Jo sitting where Mary Jo is sitting, that relate to Bill where Bill is sitting, that relate to Alex where Alex is sitting. And of course he has to translate it into the Alex translation for Alex. It's got to work specially for Alex. He breaks it, and then he distributes it. And to whom does he distribute it? To the disciples. Do you understand we're not just Christians coming together? We're not just believers coming together. We're not just... A, community coming together. We must be coming together as disciples. Amen. 
and disciples are those who have committed every aspect of their life, their mind, yes. their body, yes. their spirit, yes. their heart, yes. their ears, their eyes, their yes. voice unto the Lord. Yes. He gives it to the disciples. Ultimately, it is a renewal meal for disciples. He gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is what God has called me to do. God has not called us to be like these spirit beings who believe all these spiritual truths and one day we're going to die and get to heaven and embrace those spiritual truths. He gives it to us as embodied human beings who are living out our lives and our lives are representing everything that he is about, that his covenant is about, that his purposes are about. Yeah. Take and eat. This is my body. I'm about to demonstrate in my body, not just in some nice teaching, not just in some Gnostic spiritual reality, not just some nice myth yes. I'm about to demonstrate in my body yes. what the kingdom of God is all about we are called as believers who partake of this supper who are known as disciples to be actively livingly embodying and demonstrating in our lives who Jesus is and what it means to be a disciple Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. My body and my blood are going to renew the people of God. My body and my blood are going to renew my disciples. My body and my blood will be accomplishing this for the next well, we know at least 2,000 years until the Lord returns. For this is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. We have the blood of Jesus that allows us access into the new covenant. We have the broken body of Jesus. The blood and the body forgive our sins and empower us to be embodied disciples even as he was. But I say unto you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And that is an incredible statement. He says, I'm partaking of this meal. I am demonstrating. I am inaugurating. I am going to open the the." the temple. I'm going to rend the veil. I'm going to allow access to God. I'm doing that now with you in this meal. But I will not do it again until all of you are gathered here again with me on the other side of the cross. And what Jesus is saying is the Lord's Supper is more than simply about what Jesus has done. It is about what Jesus has done for us and how in doing what he's done, he's brought us all together in unity and oneness. He says, I'm doing this with you and I will not do it again without you. See, when we come to the Lord's Supper, we're to be looking two directions. There's a vertical direction and there's a horizontal direction. The vertical direction is this is a transaction between God and man. We look heavenward, but there's a horizontal dimension. We look to each other and say, and this is a transaction between us. When we come to the Lord's Supper, we are to repent we are to exercise faith but our repentance and our faith 
it's not only our sins against the Lord, but it is our sins against each other. Amen. We need Amen. to repent from both. We cannot drink this between just simply us and the Lord. We have to drink it and partake in that supper the same way Jesus said, with each other. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let's, we're not going to sing a hymn today, but we're going to take a moment to reflect. We are going to repent of our sins, our disobedience, our unbelief toward the Lord, and we're going to repent of our sins toward each other in minimizing each other, in dividing ourselves from each other, in judging one another, in looking somehow as we're the haves and there are other brothers and sisters in the body of Christ that are the have-nots. Those things hinder us from partaking of the Lord's Supper as disciples. We have here today, we have believers who are white and believers who are of color. We have believers from America and we have believers from Africa here today with us. We have believers from Asia here among us. We together are the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is not the body of Christ unless every part is doing its share. Unless every part has a voice. Unless every part is acknowledged. Yes, Republican Christians, there are Democratic Christians. And yes, Democratic Christians, there are Republican Christians. Yes, middle class Christians, there are poor Christians. And yes, young Christians, there are old Christians. Old Christians, there are young Christians. And yes, Male believers, there are female believers. And yes, brothers and sisters of all kinds of traditions, there are brethren who have different traditions. They are part of the body of Christ. We need to repent before the Lord and allow him to bless and break and distribute what he wants to accomplish in our midst. So let's take a moment of reflection, and then we will partake of the body and blood of Christ. I invoke you, Holy Spirit, come in our midst, Lord, as the early church would invoke you, Lord God, to take this bread and take this cup and energize it with your supernatural power that we may partake of the bread of heaven and that we may partake of the blood, that the blood that has been, been sprinkled upon the, the altar in heaven. And Lord, that you might come in our midst and renew us. Now, Holy Spirit, as you begin to come, bring things to our remembrance, Lord where we need to repent, Father.
thank you for your grace that superabounds unto us. I thank you, Lord, for your blood, the blood of the new covenant shed for the forgiveness of our sins. I thank you, Lord, for your love. You love us into loving you and loving each other, and may you continue to do that, Lord. And I thank you that you always bring us back to the table, Lord, as a sign that you are with us. You are for us. You are pursuing us to make us into the disciples you desire us to be. Holy Spirit, now take the outward celebration of the body and blood of Christ and apply it to us inwardly, Lord. Change us all. Let people be transformed as we partake today. Let people be healed as we partake today. Let people be delivered as we partake today. And let your church become united in the unity of the faith, Lord God, as we partake. We partake of the body of Christ in Jesus' name. We partake of the blood of Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you. We have been cleansed and empowered to be your disciples. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Okay, we are going to get started with the next portion of our service. We also have a guest from Germany here today. Jasmine Wallert, who is from Germany and the director of MANA Foundation in Uganda, is going to be sharing. She's going to be uh, sharing and she's going to be uh, giving us a presentation. Jasmine, come on. Forward. Okay. <laughs> okay, nice to meet you all. My name is Jasmine. I'm from Germany. Um, I'm working as a social worker in Germany, and I am so happy to be here, yeah, to, to be a part of your church today before I'm flying back in two hours. Yeah, um, I just want to give you a brief update um, how I ended up in Uganda, how I um, got in contact with, past with Bishop Jimmy, and um, why we started the foundation work in Uganda. Uh, yes, our foundation calls MANA Foundation, and before I'm starting, I want to give a very, very brief update about my, my background. Actually, I never planned to do any missions in Uganda. It was never, never, ever in my mind. If I could choose by my own, I would choose a very beautiful island, if I'm very honest. <laughs> yes, but um, it is, um, yeah, I didn't grow as a Christian. My family background was really, really messy and abusive. I went back, um, I left the home with a social worker, I went to the shelter, I came back, and um, then there was one time my mom, she got invited to a church from a, from a workmate, and I joined, she invited me. I was already 19, and there I had my first encounter with the Lord. It was really so amazing. I, I entered the church, and I just asked God, God, if you are really real, I want, to, I want to meet you. I want to experience you. And it was so intense. I remember <laughs> there was a um, prayer call, and I was no, almost not able to walk up to the front because God's presence was so heavy. And I said, wow, this is so cool. But um, then things went and passed by, and my family was still, we all knew God at that time like my stepfather, my mom, and I. We went to the church, but you know what? It um, doesn't mean if you go to the church that you become 
really a follower of Jesus or you know Christ. It's the same if you are, yeah, standing in the garage, you're not automatically become a car, you know? That's, uh, it was really, I went to the church and it was, it was really, then I really, I, it was still difficult in my, in my, in my family. It was still the abuse and then we knew God, but we all struggled. And then I left my home and I said, okay, let me keep, this is my private thing. They are minding their business, I minding my, and my faith is my private business. I left and I was living more than 10 years in another town, two hours far. And I almost lost the contact to my family, expect to my sister. And then really years passed by, years passed by. And yeah, I knew God, I had this incredible encounter with Jesus, it was so amazing. And I know there is a God, but um, I just entered churches years and I was always sitting in the last line and I was, I didn't trust anybody and then I was the first one who left again because of all that abuse in my life, I, I didn't want it even to trust anybody and any pastor and any, and then uh, there was a missionary from the US, he came to um, Germany and I knew that, I, I, I saw the advertisement, I said, okay, I have to need, I need to meet Jesus. I, I was feeling so empty and depressed, even I was a Christian, and there are so many depressed and empty Christians in Germany, you can't believe. And I went there, and I wanted to receive my prayer to feel better, you know? I, yeah, sometimes it's all about emotions, but God is not an emotion, God is a, yeah, it's a different kind of reality. But in, at that time, I just wanted to feel better, I wanted to have my encounter with God again. I went to the front, and I asked him for prayer, and he prayed for me, and I looked at him, and I just thought by myself, what a waste of time. I didn't feel anything. I wanted to feel, <laughs> it was so frustrating. And he looked at me, he said, tell me, how was your relationship to your mom? Oh, I, this is a wrong question you can ask right now. I, I told him, it is okay, she's living there, I'm living here. I forgave her, we had our issues, but it is better that everybody is minding his business. And he said, you have to call her, you have to talk to her, and you have to forgive her. And I said, I don't know how, you know, when you, sometimes when you go so, through so much pain and abuse, it is the most difficult thing in the world you can do to go back to that person who hurt you most and ask for forgiveness. It was, I said, I can never do that. But on the other hand, I was walking up and down, I was so angry because I wanted to have my encounter with God again. I left that service, I took my phone, and then I called her. <laughs> and she was asking me, what do you want? And I said, yeah, well, it is not, it is what was the most difficult phone call in my life. <laughs> I said, yes, I feel, you know, all what happened in the past, I want to say, please, I will forgive you because I feel God want me to tell you I forgive you. And it was so intense, she started crying on the phone and she said, you can't imagine how long I wanted to ask you for forgiveness, but I didn't know how. And you should know that I love you. And I was 37 at that time, or 36, and I never heard it out of her mouth. It was the first time in my life and it was so, it was such a release and there's so much power in forgiveness. I went back in the service, I said, okay, I'm ready. I talked to my mom <laughs> and he said, well, okay. And then he prayed and it was so powerful. Things changed, uh, it was so amazing. And at, at that time it was, to, it was, when was it, 2018. And as usually, I love to smoke my self-rolled cigarettes. In the evening, my cigarette and I'm drinking my tea. And that after that prayer meeting, I went home, I rolled as usual my cigarette and it was tasting so bad. I said, what is wrong? And I even didn't ask that guy, the missionary, to, to pray for me that I want to be free from smoking. It was even, uh, I, I tried to stop smoking for more than 50, I was smoking actually 15 years. I was so addicted. I was throwing the cigarettes away and the next morning I took them out of the rubbish. I really, or I was giving them away, I bought me a new one. It, it was really, I, I wasn't smoking a lot, but just to calm myself down, and this was a bad habit. And, and the next morning, I, I, again, I wrote my cigarette, 
and I could, I was almost really passing out. It was so gross. <laughs> and God was telling me so clear, forgiveness is setting you free. Yeah. And since then, since the phone call with my mom, since the forgiveness, I never smoked a cigarette again. I was totally free from, <laughs> this is so, so amazing. I, yeah. And then the, the journey starts, and this is also, she's a big part of my journey. Then it came up 2019 that God told me very clear, join the disciple training school, YOM. I don't know, many people know YOM, right? Yeah. And it cost, it cost a lot of money. It was so expensive. It was $5,000. The whole school, like the, the, the Bible school plus the outreach. And, and again, ask your mom. It was so much. I said, I cannot ask my mom because I was a very like, like distance and somehow pride. But God told me, go and ask your mom. And it was a big thing for me because, uh, yeah, we had this forgiveness call, but it was God really challenged me to get back to her. And then I, I told her, and she said, well, let me think about it. It's a lot of money. But just two days later, she came. She said, okay, I will give you the money. I really feel you should go there. And then the journey starts. I, did, I joined the disciple training school, which was so cool. And there I received my calling to really founded Mana Foundation. It was a prophecy I received. I got baptized and I made a really new restart with the Lord. And since, yeah, and you see that? God is amazing through that obedience of forgiveness. Yeah. God is opening you doors. And, and even this thing with Mana Foundation. Um, yeah, you can move the, uh, the next folder, please. Um, yeah, it started the, the, the prophecy, and in that year, we are, um, started already our first project in India. We built a shelter for girls, and the doors were open also for Uganda. And here's um, somehow an overview about uh, the presentation. I want to share about the vision and mission, the team, the projects. Yeah, we have three projects, the hygiene classes, the food garden, and the house of hope. Next one. The background, yes, I got uh, the missions, and this is a, a couple, they are friends of mine. They are running a foundation in Africa and Tanzania for more than 10 years, and it is such a big thing to uh, found uh, an NGO in Germany. It's so many restrictions, and I asked them if they can support me, and they were willing to help me with all the paperwork that we can be a registered NGO. And yeah, with this couple, we started MANA Foundation. and. Um, the main point is like, yeah, empowerment, to empower people through practical skills and like mental um, yeah, stability through different methods. Even as a social worker, we can use many, many different like resources oriented methods really to bring people out of this hopelessness and I, I, there is no way for me. This is, um, it's also a part. We're having the practical skills and we're having this mindset. Um, here's just a small overview um, what the, uh, the meaning of mana. You see our logo is so beautiful. It's like a tree and a little girl who's um, stretching the hands forward to the tree. It's um, because of the projects, the food gardening and the protection. The tree is bringing like shadow and fruits and protection and provision. And the main focus for the foundation is like we want to really work with girls and women and to empower them. And we choose the name Mana. It has a, the Hebrew meaning is like gift of God because it doesn't matter the background or the nationality, you are a chosen gift of the Lord. And the meaning in Turkish, it's even meaning. Your life has a meaning. That's why, yeah, we choose the, na the name Mana. Our vision to empower the vulnerable people to have a healthy and self-sustaining life through education and practical skills. Our mission, empowering the vulnerable and rewrite their stories of their life. And this is actually what I really love so much to rewrite their stories. It is not about what we are doing for the Lord or like, yeah, to do something and to, yeah, with our own strength, it's about what Jesus did. And through that, what Jesus did, he, we are able, or he is able to rewrite our stories. Doesn't matter the background, and this is so beautiful. This is a team in Germany. 
there you see the, the couple who helped me to found the foundation and my sister and I, we are the, like the, the foundation yeah, for all this work in Germany. And the next one, you see the team in India, the social worker, she is running the shelter in India. And now the team, he built it up in Uganda. This is um, Bishop Jimmy Katugamu and his son Bizi, he's doing the coordination. And there's also a staff we have, um, we are working with, her name is Jenny. Yeah, next one. Here again, our projects we are working on. I want to introduce very briefly what are we doing in those projects. Um, hygiene workshops was, um, yeah, why we choose the topic of hygiene. This um, is in a very interesting um, history because I never planned to do some hygiene workshops or classes. Normally my heartbeat is organic farming and food gardening, which I want to, uh, to introduce later. But when I went uh, to the bishop the first time, I was talking to his son and he asked, and I asked him, what can we do to empower the girls and the ladies? And he said to me, yeah, the topic of hygiene classes and pets and education in this, uh, in this topic is such a difficult and full of a topic which is so ashamed for many girls. We should um, do something in that direction. And the good thing is like, we're able to collect a lot of materials. Before I came to the bishop's family and then we, yeah, had amazing classes with, um, yeah, topics about like, sexual transmitted disease, um, um, mindset, empowerment, setting goals, hygiene, like the body hygiene, what happened, in, what happened in my first period in puberty, how my body changed, even the menstrual cycle, all these things we could, yeah, we could teach those ladies and they were so grateful. And then another point, we can move forward. There are some pictures came up that they are so struggling with um, when they're having their first period. And my friend, she's a single mom, and I asked her, what, is the, what was the most hardest thing for you? And she told me, yes, it is so uh, difficult. I had no money to buy pets. Okay, this is, you know, we don't, we don't have these kind of issues in Germany. And she said, girls, many girls are even missing school. They're not going to school. They're using something what they can find, like even it's sometimes leaves or, or clothes or something or just nothing, just staying at home until the period ends. And then um, we found the opportunity to buy reusable pets and we gave them out to the village, to the community. We reached many different villages um, and the girls were so grateful. If you wash them with the antibacterial soap and you dry them, you can use them up to three years. Yeah. And another point which was very important um, was to talk about the menstrual cycle. Many girls in the villages, they have no idea what's going on in my body, why I'm changing, what is the change, and what is the menstrual cycle. And for this, we, we got those tools. This is a cycle beat. And we, we handed that out to every girl when we are reaching to do the hygiene classes. Here, the red um, beat you see, it's where the period starts. And then you see the brown beads, which are the unfruitful days, the safe days. And normally a woman is like fruitful around six days a month, but yeah, they're extra safe days. We have around 12 beats. And you have a black ring, you can move forward. That means every day you move one beat forward that you really exactly see when you have your fruitful days and when you have your unfruitful days in a menstrual cycle between 28 and 32 days. And this actually is a tool to help the girls to get an overview, is my cycle regularly, am I like have a healthy cycle when I have fruitful days. Because even many married women, they're having a lot of children and they can't even handle, they have no money for prevention. That's often the issue in the villages or like so many unwanted pregnancies, so many single moms. And this is a simple tool without chemicals or it's even not that costly to give out to every girl. And this is what we did. It's also, um, yeah, from, from the raising donations we got to gave out the pets and um, the cycle beat. 
yeah, this is what we did in our projects, like giving out hygiene articles, um, um, teaching them different kind of skills, also to like to make timelines, like what, what was my bad experience, write it under your timeline, what was my good experience, when do I meet God? And this, this is already past, I'm like here from zero to 16 years, and this is remaining, this timeline. What is my goal? What do, do I want to achieve? And even this topic of, of um, not long-term goals in 15 and 20 years, I want to become a doctor. How can I, like I always teach them the SMART goals, like specific, measurable, um, attainable, and in, in, in time, in which time limit, like they really have to break their goals down that they become realistic and even motivate them to, 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 to go forward. Even what is my goal for the next week? What do I want to achieve? Or if I want to start reading and writing and I never went to school, what can I do? I don't need to be passive and depressed and be sad. I can find somebody who even teach me about the alphabet and then I can help them maybe to dig in, in the garden or to support them in their garden. What is my next little, little step I can, to, can do to achieve my goal? And this brings these girls so much hope because sometimes they're, sometimes we need each other, right? We can't do, yeah, we just need to push each other and say, look, this is the direction you could go. And this, with these yeah, small tools, we can yeah, support these ladies a, a, a lot to bring hope to the hopeless. This uh, is a, one of the village we went with Lizzie and we gave out the reusable pets and education books. Um, yeah, as I said, we gave out reusable pets, but our main goal is to help people to help themselves. And I was thinking, I went back to Germany, what can we do? The, the reusable pets are so expensive. And I went to the company in Germany, she is producing these reusable pets where yeah, it's, it's a demonstration how they look like. And, she sh um, and um, this is 100% cotton. It's very important that there are no chemicals inside and there are some layers inside. And she teached me how I can produce the own reusable pads. And with that knowledge, I went back in Feb with a team of two ger three German ladies, which was pretty amazing. And we, um, we had classes, then the G German lady helped in every village we went to make their own reusable pads. We bought the materials and teach, and this was like a, so a blessing for the girls that they know how to make their own reusable pads. Yeah. This is really a story changer. Now they have tools, even they can teach the other girls how to make them. They don't need to sit at home when they're going to school or even to get diseases from some materials which are not hygienic at all. That's uh, our designs yeah, we, we, we made in the, in the villages. Normally, um, this is supposed to be a video, but the video are not playing, right? Okay. Yeah, on that, on that picture, you just see the girls, they're making their own pets. Yeah, we always, it was pretty nice. Our every outreach we did in different villages, we um, provided a meal. We provided reusable pets we bought and we provided materials to make their own pets. This, yeah, and on the, on the end, we had the German team with two teenager girls, which was pretty cool. They came all the way from Germany. They were soccer experts. They play uh, professional soccer in Germany. And they played, they had a soccer um, tournier with the girls every, after every workshop we did. It was a highlight. And you see, you are not too young to join an outreach because everybody can really play his part in the outreach. This was a big, big blessing for those girls. They had so much fun because this was um, like a no-go somehow for many girls in the village to play soccer. But then the, the, the um, yeah, German girls came and said, wow, we are playing and we want to invite you to play soccer with us. And they were so excited and it was so much fun. Yeah, that was a, f a project of food uh, of hygiene. And we have another one, it's a food gardening. It's in the northern district close to South Sudan. There, the situation is somehow different. It is very dry, it is very flat. And um, yeah, it's a kind of empowerment project because in the dry season, three tomatoes, 
or the wet season, three tomatoes cost 500 Ugandan shilling. In the dry season in the district of Arua, three tomatoes cost 2,000 shilling. And women are suffering. I saw women there in the villages, they're leaving the house at five, going to dig the field, trying to grow crops. And with these crops, they are, they are um, um, growing and harvesting. They're going to the market and trying to sell. And what, the, what they sell, this kind of amount of money they have for the day. There's so much um, yeah, suffering in the dry season. The children are often alone in the villages or a neighbor looking after them. Some children had really, really <coughs> stomach like this because they had worms. And the, the moms even didn't have money to buy a warm medication. It was really heartbreaking to see. And um, during that time, also I saw many single moms uh, were forced into prostitution because they didn't have any solution, especially in the dry season. And that's why we, we built up our uh, project House of Hope, which I want to speak last about. But first, let us um, go a bit deeper in this food gardening. Um, this is also a food garden project we did in January this year. <laughs> we started with an engineer from Germany. I invited him. And there you see a children's prison. In Uganda, we have not like this youth shelter, as we know in Germany. We have like prisons. Boys come in and girls. And they only have like, matu like, um, like millet flour and beans. That's it. <laughs> No vegetables, no, no fruits. And I said, OK, let's build a food garden here. And it was so cool. The, the, the engineer, he had two weeks time. And we built it. He collected funds. He activated all his friends around, which was so, so nice. And we were able to build a whole food garden. And the amazing thing is we have a follow-up program with an expert, like a farm manager now. And we also built a rabbit cage. The goal is that the um, every boy and every girl, when they're leaving the prison after six months, something like that, they can take two rabbits home and start their own. And there one day a boy came to me. He said, yeah, it is nice that you came, that you teach us food gardening and you built all these beds, but when I am going home, I have nothing. I am here because I was stealing food. I was hungry. And I said, well, but the knowledge you got here, nobody can take from you. Nobody can take from you. You can start, and you even they start with the rabbits. I told him, with f 500 milliliter of rabbit urine, you can fertilize already 20 liters uh, water, and you can fertilize your first your, 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 your plants. We also had got, we, we, we took seedlings, and we showed them which kind of component of soil and charcoal, what do you need? To, to have your fruitful uh, soil and how do you water, how do you grow seeds. And, said, and this is what I mean, to bring hope to the hopeless. Because then I really, I saw hope rising up in that boy. He said, yes, you are right. Nobody can take it from me. And this is his first step. And this is so worth it. Also for this um, guy, you can, I don't know, it's, it's not good to see. There's a German the engineer. He, he also said, it's not just giving. We are receiving so much. And there was so much joy even to build these beds for the boys and the girls, it, were, it was such a fun, in, and it was so worth it because we are investing in their futures. Yeah, there you see some pictures and impressions where we have the tomato place with the boys, and there we have some single moms, we teach some food gardening. Next one. Yeah, here's again a picture. You see after, even already after four weeks, you see how the, Tomatoes are growing. This is just amazing. <coughs> Next one. And this is are these beds we built. We have a, like the first layer is organic material. Then we have a mix between charcoal and soil. And then the last layer was with manure mixed up. This is especially, as I said, in Arua, where the bishop is living, where we're having the hygiene classes. The soil is very fruitful. But this is the other part of northern part of Uganda, and there you need this kind of preparation for the soil. OK. This is normally a video the boys made for us for the food gardening to say thank you, but I think it's not working. Can you see? Yeah, then you can continue. Yeah. Um, yes. 
House of Hope was also never planned. <laughs> it came up when I was in Fort Portal with the bishop. I, yeah, I recognized all these suffering from especially single moms and young girls. I saw in Arua, in the streets, I, wa I went there in the evening, I said, where are these girls are coming from with short dresses? I said, wow. And then I was also talking to Bishop and to Bizi, and they said, yes, this is a good, big, big problem. It is um, many, many, many girls ending up in prostitution. And then we approached it, what can we do? And then we got that, yeah, project in our heart to settle up, to set up a new project, which, which calls House of Hope. And I love the Bible verse we choose for it. It is in Job 14, verse 7. It says, for there is hope for a tree. It is cut down that it will sprout again. And you know, sometimes we are feeling like cut it off trees. We are so cut it off. I was a, I was a totally cut it off. But there is, I saw that there is a type of a tree even in Germany you think the tree is dead, you cut it down, down, down. It's just, you see the stump. But after one season, six months, you see small green leaves coming up. And God is so amazing. He uses the garden and the nature to show his principle of the kingdom. And that's why this is the right Bible first. Bring hope to the hopeless. There is always hope with Jesus to sprout again. Amen. This is also, I was so impressed and so sad that this video is not working. It's a very, very small church village up, up in the north and they were dancing and it is not a party. It is not, they were, it was a serious inside. How? There is no plan B. They worship the Lord with her hand and feet and mouth. There were also some single moms with crazy hard stories. They were lying in one line, not to miss a day of a workshop. And they were worshiping the Lord. And I, saw my, I thought, my goodness, I can learn so much. How they walk in faith, how they're worshiping the King of Kings. Because I'm very often, yeah, not like that. And I just, I just thought, wow, it was, not, it was not this, are we dancing all? It just was a dance of worship. And this impressed me so much because I never saw this in Germany in my life. This is a video, but it's not working yet, but it, I just added it because it was so, it impressed me so much. Yeah, next one. For whom we had this, uh, yeah, built up the project House of Hope. It is for women and girls who are forced into prostitution, single moms. Yeah, the main reason is of, yeah, poverty. Early childhood marriages. This is also a big topic in Uganda, in many countries in Africa, actually in many countries. Um, the families uh, marrying the girls off in the age of 15, 16, 17 to, to get some money from, from, from the male's husband's family because of, yeah, because of no hope and no finances. Um, this is the construction we have. The first picture is the guest house. It calls Ohana, which means in uh, the Hawaiian language family. This is the plan where we, in the future, in the bishop's uh, family, where we want to in, uh, um, invite volunteers, pastors, whatever. Everybody is warmly welcome. This is in this construction right now. And behind that um, guest house, we're having a blue house, which we called House of Hope, where we are going to inviting the girls, where they can stay between three and six months, reaching, like receiving counseling, day structure, even girls who are in forced marriages or in really hopeless situation, they can come and stay. And for the other ladies, we are planning like workshops um, and yeah, one meal a day and a day program. This is yeah, in the, the picture before you see the garden. Also that garden, we want to set up a food garden and an outdoor kitchen. This is what we are planning, like to teach them how to bake. Um, <clears throat> our goal, creating new perspective, helping people to help themselves refugee place in cases of abuse, medical support, day structure, workshops, and for sure developing skills. It is one point to take the girls and to teach and to give them nice and kind words, but they can't do anything with that if they're having to get, go back home and to feed their children and their single moms. That's why we were processing what can we do. And next one. Um, this is what are we planning to achieve. 
we want to um, set up the bakery, like the outdoor bakery and the cafe, sewing this we already started because we have sewing machines and also to, make, to teach the girls to make their own reusable pads and the food gardening and with these kinds of skills and equipment or even all this this is a very nice this is actually from uganda it's beautiful right yeah and this is also like a, uh, it was an empowerment project for women that they're, they're having these machines and you can teach these ladies to make these kind of like um, scarves or pullover just the important the key is to really to equip them to empower them identity discipleship in christ and send them back that they are having a yeah um, alternative income opportunity. Yeah, next one. Um, and there's also a point. May can you back one folder back, please? There on the uh, picture down, you see a lady we, we interviewed. Is a she's actually a, prostit a prostitute. She's a single mom from. She has four children, and we have a YouTube channel. There you can see, the, because the interview is like nine minutes, it would be too long for now. But if you are interested, um, you can see that interview on YouTube. And another point is we are planning to write newsletters for the House of Hope, for the food garden. Um, I don't know, every six weeks. This is like we are planning so far. If you are interested to receive it, also with a uh, web link for the website page. You can leave us your email address. I don't know, did, did we prepare some paper? Or can we prepare some paper and pen? Yes, then you can leave us your email address and I'm going to send you every six weeks a newsletter about the work we are doing. Also the links to the interviews and everything. And how do you can support us? For sure the most important thing is and everything starts with a prayer. You can really keep MANA Foundation and these empowerment projects in your mind. Secondly, we are welcoming volunteers. It was such a blessing to receive that German guests we had in the beginning of the year. Everybody, it doesn't matter the age, can, can really be a part and really bless the community. Um, partnership, for sure. If you say, okay, I want to uh, support House of Hope, I want to support the Food Garden Project, you are welcome to do that. And yeah, donations. Next one. Yes, this, that's it so far from MANA Foundation. If you're interested, as I said, please leave your email address and thank you so much for your attention. Praise God, church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I was so blessed today by the singing. I was so blessed by the singing today. You know, most of the time, we are interacted by the sound systems and all this, and at times people not, do not sing from inside. They just sing because they're instruments. So today everyone was singing right from inside. Yes. Blessings in the name of Jesus. I was so happy, very happy. Well, I would like to recognize the presence of the senior pastor, Pastor Oz. Thank you so much for receiving me. And um, the church elders in this church, praise God. Also, um, I have a team that I want to come here in front and stand with me. Uh, I just want to say some few things uh, in recognition of those people. So can I have please Mary Abbott, Pastor Sue Christie, Jane Abbott, Mary Jo. Mary Jo, where are you? She may be teaching. Okay, I hope the Holy Spirit will reach where she is. Now, Matthew Abbott is the man you see here who is available. When? Yes. When? <laughs> there, is, there is an opportunity. He's always available. Now, through the late Jim Murphy, through Nate 
is it Netwa? Netwa? Fishermen? <laughs> we came to know Matthew Abba. And this has been a door through this church, the Lord of Harvest, that Matt Abbott here opened the door for so many to reach Uganda. He deserves a hand clap. <laughs> and I think Matt came first in Sue Christie. I think, if I remember very well. And Julie. Where is Julie? With the Lord. Bless her heart. We'll see her one day. And Julie, and then uh, Pastor Sue. And I'm talking about, hey, I did not see Shiloh. Come, come forward. Shiloh, where are you? Shiloh, come forward. Is Christine around? Not yet. Shiloh, you need to stand with this. Why didn't, why didn't, where is Rachel? You, did you come with Rachel? Rachel! Come forward. Wow, what a day. What a day. Praise God. Yes. And I'm talking about 30, yes, I thought I needed that one, but I know, because I want to move a lot, that's how we preach, but I will try, I will try to stay in, yes, I think, I think I need it, because I think I need it. Now, I'm talking about 30 years. And don't take that simple. 30 years, walking together, working together, to me, that is very, very precious. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And it all started, thank you, um, like this, right there. I put this in my pocket. Okay. All right, thank you. We are connected to uh, DCCI, Disciple Church Planting Project. Okay, because I hear some weird sound. Okay, I, I can still do whatever they do without. Yeah, we just want for now. Yeah, we can hear you. Church, hallelujah. Can you hear me? Okay, let's keep going. Okay, all right. I will, I, I will try to be here also. Okay. Okay. Now, we are connected to DCPI. And that, pro listen carefully. We, before DCPI, we had around 300 churches before DCPI. Then, after DCPI, after training leaders, after training pastors, we went up to 2,000 churches. Wow. Hello. Great. Now, I'm talking about registered churches. 2000. Wow. I, I, you know, I speak the other way, the English of where, well, you know, we are colonized by British, not by, by you have your own English here. <laughs> and uh, we have other churches besides that, over 800. Now, those are not registered. Amen. This year, just this year, we have planted over 30 churches. Just this year. I was telling Matt, 
we used not to have churches in Kampala. But in just about four months back, we managed to plant four churches in Kampala, in the city. Awesome. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So most of the people here. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Oh, praise God. Amen. Just four months back, we were able to plant more four churches in Kampala. Amen. But I want to tell you, before DCPI, we had 300. After DCPI, churches are being planted everywhere. But it started with this man. He deserves a hand clap. Now, Matt, through Matt, all these people are connected. Three, through Matt being to submit himself and being available, see how much work has been done. God has a purpose for you being here today. Most of the people think they are nobody. They can't do anything. I remember one day, Matt testifying, hey, I'm just a truck driver. I'm just a truck driver. Now, listen, out of the truck driver, many churches have been planted. Now, that caused Jane to go. Pastor Sue to go. Mary Jo to go. Shail and Rachel to go. And many, many more people are going. They are not going to, to tour like tourists. At times I'm so sorry for them because at times the, the conditions are harsh. Bad roads, no good beds, 20 people in one car. <laughs> you know, I was seeing one of the videos. Did you bring that thing? I was, yeah, 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 man. I was seeing Matt sleeping on uh, Pastor Marius. Because he was tired, it was just like this. The car was just jump packed. Amen. At times they say, Jesus, help me. But because of the obedience, willingness to go, something is being done in Jesus' name. They did all the teachings, teachings in different places. Now, I was telling Rachel, can you go to that church, please? That the, um, the grass church, yeah. Can you go to that church now? All these churches I'm talking about started from one church under the tree. Hello. Started from one church under the tree. It takes. It takes. Obedience, listening, and you leave the other part for him. He will always provide if you are available. He will always provide. And we started, oh, I'm sorry, we started. Churches, very small churches. People at times they see us as, and think that we are crazy, maybe we are stupid, but we know, we know what we are doing. We are not stupid at all. Started churches. You, wait, wait, that, that's good enough, but there is another one. Now, what we do, get a pole, put it there. 
another pole, another pole, another pole. Then stretch what we call canvases or toplins. Do you know what canvases are? Toplin? That's a church starting. That's a church starting. They have been in those churches. But if you go back now, Zebo, he's very faithful. Yeah. Things are different. Matt, you'll be surprised this time when you come to, to Uganda. You're going to be surprised. You remember our small church? I think slightly bigger than this. That's where we started. In the city of Fort Potter. But God, he's a faithful. He's so faithful. Now as we talk, we have one of the biggest cathedrals in that city. Three services by six people in the church. Six in the morning. You people don't take what you have for granted. Don't take what you have for granted. Back home at the church of maybe a thousand people, you can only see Maybe two, three cars. Two, at minimum, five. People are walking. Everyone here has two or five, three, four cars. But where are the people? Where are the people? They have everything to church. People walk 15, 10 miles. In and out. I'm talking about walking. I'm not talking about dr driving. I'm talking about what? I'm not saying that having vehicles is bad. No. It's all good. But use it to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. That's how we start churches. Do you think that there's a Holy Spirit in that church? Yes. Or you need a beautiful church, then you will experience the Holy Spirit. Yes. Under the tree, there is Holy Spirit there. People can get healed under the tree. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. When we talk about healing, it's not always healing of the, this man here. Yes, we need this man to be healed, but we have this man also to get healing. Yes. Hallelujah. When people receive salvation, they get healing in them. Thank you for being obedient to that pastor who told you, go and say hello to your mom. Thank you. You would have missed the paint. You would have the paint if you did not. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. Just being obedient. And look what has happened. Churches are being built. So, Matt, before people here, I want to salute you, and I want to thank you, and I want to bless you. But keep going in Jesus' name. The work that you have done, is not for free. A reward awaits for you. Amen? Amen? That goes to all of you. I just said Matt because he was the gate opener. He opened that gate. But listen, Sue has been going now even when Matt was not coming. Jane has been going now even when Matt is not coming, because the door was already done. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Now, we have Shiloh, we have Rachel, we have Mary Jo. Please, can you take our seats? I'm sorry. Yes, yes, they need that.
Mary Jo, when she came to Uganda, one day in church, I said, Mary Jo, it's your turn. Here, come up, go preach. And then Mary Jo said, hmm. Hmm. Today, when we are partaking the Holy Communion, the Bible said he broke and gave to his disciples. And each one of us here is supposed to be a disciple. Amen? At times you look to bishops, pastors, and say, those are the disciples. We are all disciples. Amen? That implies that wherever you, you, you are, by the way, back home, Pastor Ozzy, all church elders are pastors. They can preach. All church elders are pastors. They can preach. We have problems with the people. People who play sound systems. Normally, we get big problems with them because they'll tell you, if I'm not there, who's going to play that sound system? You know what we do? In my church, we have, we have about 10 music uh, people who instru uh, the, inst the instructors of the sound system. If one misses, another one is going to take over. We don't wait. Amen? Amen? That means in the church, so many people have to be prepared to take over responsibility. You don't depend available. You don't depend on one person. For the Bible says. That person who put his trust in, in a person. Not good. Not good. So we need everyone in the church to participate. Be part of the church, not part of just coming in the church and just watching what is going on. Mary Jo stood up in Uganda and preached, preached a wonderful message. Delivered people in Jesus' name. So, don't worry. If you have been in the church for 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, you can do something in his kingdom. You can only sing. You can only read that verse. It will deliver someone. Amen? So, that's how important we can have people come and do, and do the work of God. Okay, the pictures you see, those are churches, how they start. And that's, uh, I think, how many people would those, would those be, you think? What is the Lord? What is the Lord? There are about 400 or 300 right there. Praising God. Whatever condition, whatever condition, praising God. Do you think they want to, to stay in harsh conditions? No. But with those guys said, the three boys, Meshach, Sedrach, and Benega said, if our God delivers us, Oh, not. We are not going to bow before this devil. So, even if the conditions are harsh, even if we are under the tree, we will still praise God. We'll still praise God. You have the best churches here. Best, good chairs, cushioned chairs. Well, carpet. 
we don't have this. We don't. I think Mary have been there. Do we have such a church? But, you know, people love it. They love it. They love it. Overnight. Lunch hours. I was surprised, Pastor. I was surprised that people here do not do lunch hour. Lunch hour. They do lunch eating. They don't do lunch hours. Churches must learn to do lunch hour services. Fight this 10 minutes. Run to the church. Before you go to eat, do lunch hour. Pray and then go back and eat. Now, in Uganda, if you don't depend on God, what else would you depend on? The only source is Jesus. The only source is Jesus. Keep going real quick, then I can go somewhere. I need to, to share some. That's me with, you see, I was still young. And also, <laughs> listen, even Pastor Sue was still strong. Where is Pastor Sue? Yes. You see, you are very strong by then. Very strong. I'm talking about 30 years. I'm talking about time. Uh-huh, keep going. Police officers, police officers, come to church. Police officers, come to church. You see, the other day I was crossing the border with Pastor Marius border somewhere here, not very far. And then there was a police officer who was in that small thing and doing clearance. And I told, after greeting, saying, why, why are you here? I said, well, I'm here to visit. And um, would you love to come and preach the gospel in Uganda? And then Pastor Maurice said, say that to police officers here. The police, the police officer is also a human being. He needs Jesus in himself. He needs him. So when you tell me not to talk with a police officer about Jesus, I don't understand you. Whether he's a military, whether he's a police officer, he needs Jesus. Amen? So I said, be careful. They don't talk about them like that. We have them in the church. Okay, keep going. That's my small town where I come from. Keep going. That's how jam can be in Uganda. Keep going, keep going. Okay, that's, those are pictures, Matt. Matt, Matt, you see where you are? Yeah. Go, go, go. Those are the churches. Churches. I'm so happy to see the churches. Now, that is Pastor Sue in one of the churches. In Uganda, we have to translate whatever you're bringing out from English. At times, we have three translators, but most of the time, two. Amen? Try to make sure that everyone understands what you are Feeding them. Okay? Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Now, that's a class where we teach our kids at school. That's Pastor Isaac. Oh, go back. You see that thing where when we, it's like a, a, where, where you, a, a pulpit where you stand to preach the gospel. Uh -huh. We use what is available. We use what is available. If we don't have good words, we use what is available to preach the gospel. Keep going. Those are bathrooms. That's a church. That's our driver. Keep going, keep going, keep going. 
Well, okay. In the northern part, where Jasmine was staying, this is how they live. But now, since we went there, there is a big improvement. Things have been improved so much. But I want to tell you, you might see that and think, oh boy, that's too, too, too hard for me to live. You can live there. Yes, you can. And you're not going to die. You can live there, and you're not going to die. I'm always there. I'm here. <laughs> yes. I'm always there, and I'm here. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So never see those things and say, oh, that's harsh. Yes, you can be there and do, make a change, do something. People are very happy going to church, walking, very happy, long hours, no food, no coffee behind the church. No coffee behind the church. Very happy. Ready to receive Jesus. Ready to receive Jesus. At that age, ready to receive Jesus. Those are the bicycles that people ride going to church. The bicycles on your balcony that you don't use for anything can also preach the gospel. That's Pastor Shailo. He left his family. It's deep in the village, by the way. That's deep in the village. Keep going. That's one of the schools in the massacre. Well, thank you, Jesus. Now, we have all this sound system. That's the sound system we use deep in the village. Not all villages have power back home. Some villages have no power. So we use drums. I was almost when I was raising here. I was almost going to jump on that drum. Yeah. Almost. Because you have the systems. You don't need even when power is off, you can still praise the Lord. Uh, there is one of my come, come, come. Hello. Get on that thing. Get on that thing. Get on that thing. Okay. This lady is Praise God. Just just give her a second to remove all the rings and everything and you can sit here if you want. This would be better for you. Praise God. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. She did that last night. I was so blessed. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I invited you to come and, you know, share with those people in Africa. You will enjoy. Okay, keep going. That's a church. That's a church. Keep going. All right, now I'm just kind of going to, you can go on and on and show them what, what's going on there, but let's go another level now. Okay. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's go to another level. I was just sharing what we do. How do we plant churches? Just by being available. It may look very small word, but it's so big to be available. Amen? How many people are available to learn these instruments in this church? How many people are willing to come and learn and take over these instruments? It's not for one person. Amen? We need people who are available to come and step in and say, yes, I'm going to serve the Lord on this keyboard here. Amen? Amen. Back home when we are teaching, training pastors, at first we tell them, pastors, the first thing you are going to do, you'll be sweeping this church every day. The second thing, you're going to be cleaning a room. Yes. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen? Yes. That will tell me if that person is really a servant. Yes. That's right. yes. Amen? Yes. And some of you, if they tell you to go and clean the church, you'll complain. If they tell you to go and clean the bathroom, you'll complain. But there is a blessing in being Amen? So come out. Come out from those comfort zones. Take a step anywhere, any service in the church. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God so much. Um, Today, I was so blessed. Very blessed, by the way. I was so blessed by the word Pastor Oz used today in the morning. The words when we are taking a holy communion. It was very, it was a blessing time. Thank you so much to explain why and uh, what is, what does it help us? Jesus, help me now. Praise God, praise God. We are in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Do we have Bibles? You, you know, the, the English here is different, Deuteronomy. <laughs> if, if I want you to write that word, Deuteronomy, in that way, the way you pronounce it, right. yeah, it may be difficult for you to write it. <laughs> Deuteronomy. It's called Deuteronomy. <laughs> Not Deuteronomy. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Yeah. We are in Deuteronomy. All right, all good. 28, beginning with the first verse. 28, beginning with the first verse. I won't take long, just real quick, real quick. I will be very fast and quick so that people can go home. I don't know if they need to go home at this time or not. Amen? Amen. Now, we all know we have rules of the land. We all know we have to obey the rules of the land. And everyone, if you're an America, staying in America, you have to obey the rules of the land. Amen? And any time you go against the rules of the land, you'll be penalized. Are we together, church? Yes. Church, are we together? Yes. I take an example of, come on. If this young man is a traffic officer, do you have traffic police? Traffic. traffic how do you call them here? Traffic, if this young man is a traffic officer and you meet him on the road driving a semi, you know these heavy trucks? Matt used to drive one of those. We call them trailers. If you are driving a trailer 
and you meet this young man on the road, and he just raises, just put your hands like this, police officer don't pocket, the police officer is always like this, okay? And he raises his hand and say, stop. You don't look at this man because he's small. You don't look at this man because of, of maybe anything else. You have to obey because he is a traffic officer, might be putting on a uniform bearing a flag, bearing a flag of the traffic rules or the land rules. And when he raises his hand, whether you are driving a huge truck, you must stop. Are we together? Thank you. Hey. Uh. You must stop. You must obey. Because Behind him, he has got what we call authority. It's not, his, him being small does not take off his authority. He still uses that authority. Whether you're driving a trailer, you must stop. Amen? Now, if you can obey, if you can obey the rules of the land, of the land, just turn to your neighbor and say, if you can obey the rules of the land, see your neighbor, tell your neighbor, if you can obey the rules of the land. Why don't you, why, why, why don't you obey the rules of heaven? We do obey all rules of the land. But when, when time comes to obey his rules, always we disobey. Most, most times we disobey. You can obey the trust. You can obey the police officer. Okay, put your hands down. Definitely, immediately. You put them down. Raise them. You will. You're obeying the rules. Amen? Don't you think the kingdom has rules also? Do we obey those rules? Mm. That is a big one. That's a big one. We obey... The rules of the land. We obey rules of people. There is a lot that we are supposed to obey in this Bible. And what do we miss if we don't obey? If you don't obey, you are taken police. You are being penalized. If you obey, things will go good with you. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? By the way, back home, if a traffic officer stops you and you behave good and obey all the rules, he can even forgive you immediately and say, you know, you have been so good, you obeyed what I told you, keep going, but don't do that again. Amen? Amen? Now, here is what the Bible tells us. I'm not going to go the other side because I know some people don't want to hear the other side of the, of the, of the, of the story. But let me tell you, it's very healthy to know the other side of the story. Very healthy. And people have known that some people just want to hear Good things only. When I got saved, 
I knew one thing. If you committed any sin, you had to repent. You have to repent. Yes. You have to repent. Yes. Amen. That's what I knew. But these days, it's different. Even if you commit a sin, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You don't need to repent. It's all done. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, that's not true. It's not true. It's not true. Amen. I don't want to go the other side. If you allow me, I will. If you allow me, I will. Listen, in obedience, that's where we get our blessings. Amen. In obedience. The other day, I was teaching people at Shiloh's place. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remember that word. Just underline that word, in. Now, if you obey in obedience, in obedience, that's when you are going to get your blessing. In obedience. Because the other side where I, don't want, where I don't want to go, there is disobedience. And there is also, mm, what did you get? Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Mary, amen? amen. <laughs> and most of the people, they don't want to see the other side. We want blessings. You have to be obedient if you want a blessing. If the pastor tells you, today we are going to pray, this is what Sister Jasmine did. Go and take that phone and call your mama. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Hello, mama. And mama said, wow. It was long overdue. Yeah. I really wanted to talk to you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Then the door was where? Open. Yeah. That worked through obedience. Right. Because she obeyed what the, the pastor told her to do. Amen? Amen? So being disobedient, there is another price. that people don't want even to hear. The Bible tells me clearly. Let me read this first, just two, three verses, then we're done, okay? Maybe 10. Okay. It shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of, law of, of the Lord, your God. And there is another word, and to observe, that's a difficult thing. And to observe, that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. You obey, but you don't observe. And to observe carefully all his commandments. I'm not saying that we don't make mistakes. But when you make that dis mistake, did you observe that this is a mistake? When you observe that this is a mistake, you know what to do. Amen? Amen. That's the big problem with the church today. The church today, they say, we are going to obey the Holy Spirit in our lives. And you know, you have not observed how much, how much you hate your brother. Now, before you obey 
the Holy Spirit to work in you, you have to observe yourself in you so that you can make it simple for the Holy Spirit to flow easily in your life. Church, amen? In church, there is so much division in church. And what brings that division? Is that obeying the word of God? Hello, church. Is that obeying the word of God? No. One brother hates so bad another brother. They don't even come to you and tell the truth. Stand before you say, Pastor Oz, you know, I was not happy the other day because of ABCD. Can we work that one? And then keep going. They don't do that. Amen? Now, these blessings have to come to you when you obey and carefully. Carefully do what? Observe the commandments. Amen? In the book of Isaiah, the Bible says, let's sit down. Let's sit down and talk over it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Let's sit down and talk over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's talking over it. Reason together, talking over it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Tell me what hurts you most. Tell me what, what do you see in me. What do I see in you? Resolve it. Keep going. Amen? The church is full of hypocrisy. Is full of hypocrisy. And that's not obeying God's commandment. Amen? That's not how we obey God's commandment. Because hypocrisy is not one of the given commandments. Amen? Right there. Amen? So, people want blessings. In what, what do you understand by that word blessing? Are you blessed only financially? Is that the only blessing you understand? Are you blessed because you have good houses, bedrooms, and everything? Is that the blessing you understand? Only that is part of the blessing. That is part of the blessing. If you wake up in the morning and you are okay, that's another big blessing. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. If you're not in a hospital, that's right. your leg in those boats, that's, right. that's another big blessing. Amen. If you see your family, all your family people accepting Jesus, that's another big blessing. So people think that the only blessing would be material things. Amen? I count this day, I count this day, now, right now, I count this day as a blessing to me. What a blessing, brothers meeting brothers, in the name of of Jesus. Let me tell you, I've learned a lot when I suffered from COVID. That was a big lesson. I was only remaining with 15. I lost all my oxygen. I was on 65. And everyone was saying bye to me. I had six cylinders around me of oxygen. 
And each cylinder, I paid two millions. And refilling that cylinder, I paid 450 each cylinder. I could not raise my hand. I could smell nothing, feel nothing, not even my arm. That one doctor told me, just try, force yourself, try to raise those hands at least, at least seven times. I tried, it was hard, there was no oxygen. He said, go on your baby down. Do some pressure. I could not start. We, we, we actually resulted into taking a lot of leaves, eucalyptus leaves, cooked together with ginger and different leaves, cook them together and drink. And those things helped us. Cooking things together because I only had some little energy when I started drinking hot water, mix those leaves and drink them. That's when I started feeling some breath in me. But listen, don't take things for granted. I paid for oxygen. I paid. But the day Jesus healed me, he has been supplying oxygen free. If you paid for oxygen two million, okay, let's say a thousand dollars every day, would you get that money anywhere? We are blessed. That's a blessing I'm talking about. Because of obeying, you are blessed with oxygen. Amen? Those who are in the spirit, they understand Things of the spirit. Most of the times people translate things just like physical. But if you want to understand it clearly, just try to go the other side of the spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about blessings now. Okay? It's not the blessing that people think about. We always bless the food. Father, bless this food. That food is also a blessing, by the way. Bless the food. Bless the food. Bless what I'm going to do. But there is the other side that he gave you. He gave you. He gave you. He gave you life. Have you ever been in a hospital? What do, what do we call those rooms when they put you by yourself? There are those rooms where intensive care. And in that room of intensive care, there are two things you get. You either come out alive or you don't. That's intensive. But when you get out of that room, you are blessed. You are blessed. Amen? Amen? The Bible talks about all these blessings will follow you. These blessings will follow you. My commandment, which I commanded you today, that the Lord your God will set you higher above all nations of the earth. Now, when you are blessed, it's not about what you receive or what you get by your physical. You are going to be set higher. Yes. Amen? What does that mean? If I'm okay, I'm just higher. higher. Amen? Yes. Amen? If I'm breathing, I'm not on oxygen, I'm higher. Yes. Amen? Amen? If I'm not suffering from any disease, I'm higher. That's a blessing. Many people are living on pills. Today, Jasmine brought me some pills. 
to boost my high blood pressure. But my prayer today is, Father, can you help me get this stuff out of me? That would be a blessing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen? Set you higher. That's why I, I, I asked Matt to introduce him here. There are things that he brought in two lives of people that blessed them. Amen? And the Lord says, now, when I say, Matt, you did something that is setting him higher. Amen? 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 I can't see near. I can see far. Uh -huh. But I cannot see him. I know. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> you are with me? Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, I used to see everything. <laughs> that same touches the food view anytime. But you got glasses at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I have my blessing. Uh -huh. yeah. I can still reach where I want to reach. Amen. 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 Can I use both? Is it okay? Good. Okay. And these blessed things shall come upon you and overtake you because you have obeyed the voice of your Lord, of Lord your God. Blessings come and overtake you. What are those blessings that overtake you? Happiness. Joy. In your family. When you see your kids, joy. When you see your wife, joy. Hello. I can still hold it like this. When you have the meals, good meals, amen. amen. Those are kind of blessings. But there is a blessing above all those blessings. is accepting Jesus as a personal savior and the law. When you have him, you have a big blessing. Amen. amen. Blessing overtaking you. People are looking for blessings. The, the bottom line, if you need blessings, obey. The Bible says you don't need to look for blessings. Just obey. The blessings will, will overtake you. It's like people who are running church to church looking for miracles. You need miracles? Be available. Yes, and those miracles are going to fall. We had miracles under the tree. It does not matter where you are. Miracles will always come if you obey God's word. Church, amen? What is obeying? If you take it in as true, if you believe it, that's obeying his word, then miracles will follow you. Blessings will overtake you. Brother, you know, I need to be blessed. I need to be blessed. I need to be blessed. <laughs> Are you obeying? If you obey, the Bible tells me blessing will come by itself and it will just overtake you. Have you ever seen these vehicles overtaking others? Yeah. That's the speed, how blessings will overtake you. As you're still just in the line, struggling, 
right there, blessings, your blessing will come true. Amen? But you have to obey. The bottom line is obeying. I never wanted to go to disobedience the other side. I, I, I never wanted to go there. But if you want, I can go there. It's not good. It's not good if you hear that side. Back home, we regard obedience as very, very important. And it has been working. It's still working. Yes. Let me talk about the, 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 the kids here. If you hate me, I don't care. I have my passport ready with me. <laughs> Tomorrow I will go home. <laughs> kids, if you need a blessing to overtake you, listen. Listen. The ad take the advice of your parents. Take the advice of your parents. My son, Jonathan, Matt knows him, and some people here know him, and busy. They are old. If I told them anything, they would just listen and take my advice immediately. But kids here have so many rights that they cannot even listen to their parents. Now, that one stops your blessings right there. Cuts off your blessings. Because these people are already there. They know something that you need to know. If I told my boy, don't take that girl, they would just quit. Pastor Oz, if I told my boy, he's 30, and they tell him, no, it's not, they will just quit. But here, God knows. That is obedience. That's why you are seeing a lot of, after one year, divorce coming. Because you did not want to listen to your parents. They would have told you something more than that. Obedience is the bottom line. Listen. Okay. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country. I just want, want to stop there. There's so many blessings here that I can read about. But I wanted even to go the other side of disobedience so that you know there is something else if you disobey. Can we go there? Yes. Do you want to know the other side of disobedience? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Now, when the blessings overtake you, the Bible says, before you reach your working place, the blessings are already there. That's what it means. Taking. You are blessed as you go. You are blessed as you come back. Which means those blessings have already, because of obedience, they have overtaken you. They are already there. We have a prayer back home. If someone is going to look for a job, we always pray, before you go, let the Holy Spirit go ahead of you. Amen? And we also pray for the sick. Before you are taken to the hospital, let the Holy Spirit go ahead of you. Amen? And prepare everything for you. If you jump a little bit and go to verse, if you go to verse 15, that's where you see the disobedience. 
right there in the same, same verse. Same chapter, but verses 15. Where there is disobedience in, in the results of disobedience. In the churches, we have people that God has given us. People gave us people in the church to help us. Pastors, leaders in the church. They were given to us to help us so that we can learn how to go about these blessings, how we can obey in the consequences of disobedience. Do we listen to them carefully? I'm talking to you people. Do we listen to our pastors carefully? How about, how can you listen to your pastor when you don't listen to your parents? I'm coming. How can you listen to your pastor when you don't listen to your parents? And now, if you don't listen to your parents, you not listen to the pastor. And if, if you don't listen to the pastor, you'll not listen to that voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. That's how it works. Pastor always stands here and say, I think we need, I think we need a prayer on Friday, at least for five hours. Would you love to join me in that prayer? Only two or three people are going to show up. The rest of the church will not that is disobedience. Am I hitting hard, Pastor Ozzy? Maybe, maybe your people here, uh, you have to pamper them and don't, don't tell them that. <laughs> but if you come, Matt is here, Jane, and the rest are here. We don't pamper people. Tell the truth, then you decide what to do. Amen? Amen? If he tells you, let's pray, it means there is something that we need to pray for. A church of 50 people, only three people. Why? That is disobedience. And again, those people who are not coming, they still want to be blessed. And where do you get a blessing if you are disobedient? Maybe that day, maybe that day when you are going to pray, your blessing was going to overtake you. That meeting. You just missed it. You did not obey. You did not listen. Tell your neighbor, you need to learn to obey. Just look at your neighbor. Tell that neighbor, you need to learn to obey. Hello? I'm not hearing. Is it hard to say that you need to learn to obey? You need to learn that. You need to learn to obey. At times it's very hard. Listen, even in the family, what brings problem in, in the family is disobedience. Are we together? In the family, what brings all that chaos and problem is disobedience. What is, going, what is it going to cost you just to listen and say, I'm sorry? What is it going to cost you? Nothing. Amen? But because you want to live right there, mm -mm, you cannot push me down. No, we have to be this. It won't help you. What is going to come out of this is Amen?
We need the blessings, but we have to follow the Bible principles, how you get your blessings. Are we there, Pastor Oz, on 15? Are we there on 15? <laughs> this is not good food, though, on 15. If you don't obey, this is a, a little bit harsh. Because it tells you, if you are disobedient, what comes with that? I don't, that's a word, curse. Nasty. Curse. Let's read there. Because you need this, you need this food, my dear. It's not food, you need to learn about this, that somewhere you need to obey, because disobedience brings this. But it shall come to pass if you, but it shall come to pass if you don't obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you to today. All these things, all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Now, we are talking about blessings here. But there is another way where you are going to get curses out of disobedience. How many of you would love to be blessed? Just raise your hands. Just raise your hands if you would love to be blessed. Thank you, Jesus. May you be blessed today. But the bottom line is obedience. How many of you would love to be under curse? You see? No one can raise a hand and say, I want to live under curse because of disobedience. Are you obedient? Check your heart. Are you obedient? Did you listen to your parents? Did you listen to your pastors? Did you listen to those people who helped you? Check. Just check there. We all need blessings. How many need a curse? No one. Are you, are you obedient? And if you read, if you go on and read, there are so many curses that even the Bible take, says they will also overtake you. Before you reach your work where you work from, Something is standing on the way because of disobedience. Before you reach there, you will find a letter on the table. Well, we have laid you off because we have so many employers here. And why you? Among all a hundred people. Why you? Do you know what this is? Why you? Because of disobedience. It's my prayer today. It's my prayer today. May we learn to be obedient. May we learn to listen what the Holy Spirit is telling us. May we learn today that we can only get our blessings through obedience. May the Holy Spirit help us today to teach us that we need to be obedient no matter what. No matter what, we need to be obedient. In whatever we do. Amen? Pastor Oz, I want to ask you to come and stand with me. If there is anyone who feels that he needs to be prayed to renew 
his name, to renew his life, just walk forward. If you have been living under disobedience, it, it, I know, I know, I know, sometimes it's not easy for people to show up and stand up, but you will see that back home. People will just happily go and say, yes, that was me. Amen? Just stand up. It might be not here. It might be in your family. It might be something at your workplace. Just come forward. Come forward. Come forward. Just raise your hand. We can even pray for you where you are. If there's no anyone, come forward. Come forward. Thank you, Jesus. Can we clap for these people as they come forward? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 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 Come forward, come forward, come forward, come forward. Don't remain there. Because something is covering you. Something is telling you not to go. But let me tell you, you are going to stop your blessings because you are not obedient. Just come forward. Come forward if you are still there. Come forward in Jesus' name. Come forward. Well, we'll pray for you. We will pray for you. Pastor, do you have anointing oil or you, you don't? You don't use that? You do? Let's pray for them and anoint them. Yes. Just come forward. Come forward. It might seem heavy for you. It might seem heavy for you. But from today, we are play, praying a blessing over you that you begin to obey and listen and listen. And I call upon the Holy Spirit to open your inner ears right now. Your inner ears. Your inner ears. That you can listen carefully. You can listen and also accept to, to be obedient. At all levels, I'm talking about all levels in Jesus' mighty name. All levels, all levels. Just listen to that verse. Be just obedient. The Bible says that blessings will overtake you because of obedience. I pray today. May those blessings overtake you. At the job place, where you work, in your family. Overtake you. In your spiritual life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the name of Jesus. I know the devil is a liar. I know the, the devil is so destructive. Even blocking people to hear the word. People are living in the sin, an absolute sin of disobedience. Father, I call upon your spirit right now. That we lay hands on these people right now. Whatever has been holding them in disobedience, loose them in Jesus' mighty name. Loose them in Jesus' mighty name. Now, now, loose them. Loose them now in Jesus' mighty name. I call upon the fire of the Holy Spirit right now to burn everything that is not of God. Everything that is not of God. Fire! Fire in the name of Jesus. Fire in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God. Live now. Live now. Now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, for we repent, we repent, and say, and say, just say, we are sorry, Lord, for whatever we've been doing under disobedience. You can change that and bless us, Lord. Yes. You can change that. There's nothing impossible. We know there's nothing impossible. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everyone say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, we break that spirit of disobedience. We break it. We break it. We break the spirit of disobedience right now. Right now, we break that spirit. Everywhere you stand, we come against you. We come against you. We come against you, spirit of disobedience. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen.